Today we're going to be looking at the Gazelle, a new multifunctional tandem model from Cybex. This is an interesting model for several reasons, from a customer perspective, because it's a presumably premium two-child model priced a bit below other top-end two-child models, and also because of its shopping configuration, where the bulk of the model becomes dedicated to holding your stash, and as such, becomes a potentially cheaper alternative to the Boogaboo Donkey. From a mechanical perspective, we find it additionally interesting because this is Cybex's first foray into building models with these proportions, meaning bigger and necessarily sturdier in order to deal with the increased weight capacity. And it's interesting to see the route they've taken to pull this off, especially since the Gazelle is a gold line model, a designation tied to Cybex's self-imposed product hierarchy, which implies that the quality is a tad below that of its platinum line, in accordance with its lower price. So let's get started then, beginning with some stats. The Gazelle clocks in at 12.5 kilos and folds down to 56 by 32 by 74.5 centimeters in its most compact configuration. It can take 22.6 kilos of weight per seat, which is far more capacity than you will need given the size of the seats, and storage-wise can load 10 kilos in the upper basket when in shopping mode and 13 kilos in the underslung basket. Note that when considering the folded size and overall weight of the model, you of course do need to add a little bit if using Gazelle in its tandem configuration. Starting off with a seat, I would say that this is where the gold line placing of the model strikes hardest, in the Gazelle's somewhat cheaper textiles with minimal padding and a canopy that, though it does provide sufficient sun protection, is primarily single layered and a bit weaker in its mechanical elements than I'd have liked. In addition, size-wise, the Gazelle's seat is a bit shorter than one would find on an average mid-size model, and I would say that, though they claim the model is suitable for children up to four years old, the actual age limit for full comfort is closer to three years old, depending on the size of the child. Note though that when using the model for two children, both seats are the same size, which is a characteristic that separates out the Gazelle from a lot of other tandem models, which tend to provide a primary seat of standard mid-size proportions, while the tandem seat is smaller. In terms of use then, this makes the Gazelle somewhat subpar as a single child model, but above average, size-wise at least, if using the model for a pair of children with a tight age span. When it comes to parent comfort and overall ease of use, the Gazelle has both pluses and minuses. As far as the handle is concerned, the model offers a good range of lengths, and is sturdily built, feeling quite solid in your hands while pushing around the stroller's significant bulk. The Gazelle is also relatively easy to fold, though there are more steps and mechanisms involved than one finds with most Cybex models, due to an additional safety trigger on the handle and the potential need to fold multiple seats or remove the shopping basket, depending on how you are using it. Though we'll be discussing the Gazelle's mechanics in more depth in a moment, it's worth noting here that the overall structure of the model has a very solid and reinforced core, with good suspension, but that most of the peripheral, peripheral elements attached to this core, the seat, sliding adapters, and the rear wheels, are all a bit loose, right out of the box, which makes the model feel a tad rickety with regard to these elements, and can make some functions a bit fiddly to use. In addition, despite the good suspension and decently sized wheels, the chassis is quite long back to front, which makes maneuvering somewhat cumbersome and makes tipping the model backwards, as one needs to do for example when going up a curb, very heavy to accomplish. This second problem is exacerbated when placing a child in the lower forward position due to the distribution of weight, and the result of this is a serious limiting of the Gazelle's driving ability when using either the shopping or two-child modes, and even when using the Gazelle as a one-child model in the basic configuration, the effects of that length on maneuvering and the extra force needed to raise the front end keep the Gazelle from living up to the full potential that its sturdy core, suspension, and decent wheel size would otherwise afford, in my opinion. Further concern about that lower front position when forward facing, as would be necessary to get the most out of shopping mode for example, is how far away you are from your child, as well as how low to the ground your child is, which to my mind is a bit sketchy to start with, but additionally means that you have to stop any time you need to attend to your child, and also, frankly, a lot of children just don't like such separation, it can be scary to them, which is one of the reasons for the popularity of reversible seats. So unless you're pretty confident that you know your toddler's opinions on such things, you should be careful not to purchase the model just because you, prematurely, picture yourself strutting carelessly about with that mostly shopping cart stroller configuration. Okay, let's move on to the mechanics of the Gazelle then, starting off with the handle, the fold, and the overall structure. As I said in the last section, the core design of the Gazelle is quite solid, though let's be honest for a moment and point out the pink elephant in the room. That solid structure is not hard to achieve when one is blatantly ripping off a model as tough as the Upper Baby Vista. All across the Gazelle's chassis, from the telescopic handle down to the simple folding system, from the Vista-style suspension to the reinforced hinges and riveting, the Gazelle has been built in proportions and with a respect for structural integrity that has otherwise not appeared so far out of Cybex as a brand other than on their astronomically priced platinum models. This very much includes horizontal symmetry, by the way, achieved via the handle, the thick welded rear crossbar, and the solid front frame, 
all of which, in addition to the seats, shopping basket, and so on, which just add horizontal support, make the potential for asymmetry issues very unlikely with the model. In the end then, there are only two larger structural concerns that I have with the Gazelle. The first being the slamming motion needed to achieve the fold, which has the potential to accelerate wear on the internal components, and the second having to do with the potential pressures of the model's length for users focusing on the front-loaded configuration. But in this second instance, given the simplicity of the fold and the general horizontal support, I doubt that much will occur to the main body of the chassis other than a bit of looseness in the middle hinged areas. Moving down then to have a closer look at the rear frame, I've already mentioned the good suspension and sturdy crossbar, but I'd still like to make a few notes on the brake system and the rear wheels. Regarding the brake system, I've got to say that this is where they should have quit copying the Vista, at least from a longevity standpoint, as the rotation-based system they usually employ is actually a tad simpler and in many ways less prone to problems. Instead, they've opted, opted for a ballpoint-style flip-flop friendly brake with a wire to get from side to side. Mechanically then, this more complex system creates a greater potential for problems, both due to the wire, which doesn't have an adjustment screw to control tension problems commonly occurring in wire-based systems over time, as well as within the housings themselves, which necessarily make use of a number of small spring-loaded components. Another area on the rear frame to be aware of is the way the wheels connect to the chassis, in that one side of the axle is flat as it enters the housing, meaning that the axles do not spin within the housings at all, but rather only spin within the ball bearings on the wheels themselves. This is generally a good thing, as it better protects the chassis from wear, though, given a certain looseness in the wheels right out of the box, I'd guess that there's a potential for ball bearing issues down the line. And thus, since the axles do not spin within the housings, it will be important to remove the wheels from time to time and lubricate the connections, to prevent brust buildup, so that should there be problems in the future, it will be possible to remove the wheels for replacement or repair. Moving on to the front frame lastly, the first thing I'd point out is the size of the front wheels, as well as the decent suspension on the front forks. As I alluded to earlier, this setup combined with the Gazelle's average 12-inch rear wheels and a good rear frame suspension would have made for a decent degree of terrain capability, had these characteristics not been thwarted by the effects that the overall length and configurations aimed at front-loading the model have on maneuverability on the one hand, and the ability to tip the stroller backwards to get up and over curbs on the other. That being said, provided that you use the Gazelle in a relatively flat environment, these elements will definitely still help with certain aspects of terrain, such as cobblestones, gravel and snow, and so on, where the train-like bulk of the model will aid in plowing over or through such impediments. Looking closer at the front frame, the front wheels are quite tight in their housings, which is a nice thing, with an O-ring style rubber washer at the base of the axle providing a bit of pressure. The main reason that they are so tight, however, is that the axle sits flush through a ball bearing before being locked in the housing higher up. The positive side of this design, in addition to the tightness of that connection, is a smooth rotation of the bearings. But it's important to note that any time you use bearings in this way, there is the potential for wear down the road, which may result in the need to replace those bearings, though this is neither difficult nor costly, mind you. In addition, as with the rear wheels, it's important to lubricate inside this mechanism regularly, not only to keep the bearings running smoothly, but also to keep the axles from rusting to the bearings, which would make fixing any sort of eventual problems a nightmare. As a last note on the front frame, though there is a pretty standard swivel lock, that overall chassis length and front-loaded weight do make the model nearly impossible to tilt for turning if one were to lock the wheels, which makes the swivel locks more or less useless other than in the one-child mode with the middle seating position. So, would I recommend buying the Cybex Gazelle S then? My judgment of the model is as follows. From a mechanical standpoint, the core design of the model is generally strong, and though there are a few weaker elements, as I've pointed out, I would say that longevity-wise, this is a good model for its price. The real problem with the Gazelle, however, comes down to use value, and I'd like to explain this by making reference to a couple of other two-child models that, to me, the Gazelle seems specifically designed to undercut price-wise, the Epa Baby Vista and the Boogaboo Donkey. If you think about the Gazelle for a moment, there are three potential configurations. Single child not for shopping, with a seat in the middle position, single child in the shopping configuration, and the two child configuration. In the first configuration, the use value of the, of the Gazelle as a Cadillac type model versus the Vista for example, though many tandem strollers are built this way, is degraded by not having a larger sized and more luxurious basic seat, as well as by the effects of the chassis length on the model's terrain capabilities. In the second configuration, single sh child shopping mode, the Gazelle fails to compete with the Boogaboo Donkey, whose mono configuration has made it one of the best shopping strollers for years, both because the Donkey gives one easy and direct access to their child, as well as because its wide footprint provides significantly better maneuverability and terrain capability than the long front-loaded design of the Gazelle. 
In the end then, in terms of best use, the Gazelle really only offers value in its two-child mode, where the price and equality of seat size may give it an advantage with specific, though not all, age spans between siblings, provided one lives in a very flat urban environment with a lot of access ramps. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you are currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.